Hi guys, just a quick update video on the open build printers that I'm doing um, just to show where I'm sort of taking this at the minute um, I'm not really getting very far unfortunately because it's just so busy with one thing or another um, unfortunately I do run a, another business separate to this and um, yeah it keeps me quite occupied just um, day to day living really so this is uh, sort of still dragging a little bit um, and I tend to work on these at night now uh, but what I'm thinking of at the moment is I've got enough material to do uh, and enough parts to do two sort of open designs um, I wanted to keep all my machines enclosed but um, yeah, after serious consideration, I'm just I've decided to do some some open build versions as well, just purely on cost and uh, simplicity, and um, just the fact that there are you know lots of other materials out there now that don't need a heated enclosure and um, will print quite fine in a in an open printer. So I'm going to possibly do two <coughs> like this. This is. Um, Obviously a very standard design with the sort of uh, over arch um, frame design with a moving bed plate. Um, but this is what I've sort of come up with for now. So I, I wanted these very sturdy and as you can see what, just the framework alone is going to be sturdy. For now I've just put all these angle brackets to hold everything in place just so I can sort of sit and think about it but these all will be drilled through and proper connectors put in and strengthened up but for now this is just food for thought for myself at the minute so yeah that's this, this is one design that I'm going to possibly make so I'll probably make two of these I've got enough to do two um, identical parts lots of laser cut plates that I've had made um, I had these cut because I was originally going to make a a TiVo copy almost a T like a TiVo tornado or a, uh, a TiVo is it Black Widow or um, something like that um, but I wasn't sure what I was gonna do but this is what I've come up with for now only just because I, I'm, I'm I want to build something quickly and uh, the bigger printer so I'll be building a couple of these. This will be uh, an enclosed type printer. All the mechanics will be external to the enclosure really. So um, in a way it will function similar to my main workhorse. This is a Core XY, as most people know, you can't really see because it's got a cover on. I have a cover um, over the top. I now feed filament basically directly <clears throat> in the center of where I'm uh, printing so it's the leastest path of resistance and very little deflection and um, that's there's a white PTFE tube that goes down and feeds from the reel I was going to use the second stepper motor to basically pull from the reel and push up and feed the main extruder drive um, but I haven't done that yet just mainly on time and I've just got some fans keeping this thing cool so this thing's a bit of a Heath Robinson throw together now. It's, uh, it's not what I wanted it to be, but it, it's a workhorse and it, it, it produces things without fault um, all the time. There is a, a small um, air filter in there just to take out some of the ABS smell. Other than that, it hasn't changed too much. It's still on an 8-bit board. It's still running... Um, I think an older version, I think I'm probably even two two versions out on the on the Marlin. It's an older version of Marlin. Um, but it does exactly what I need it to do and that's print good ABS solid objects all the time. And um, 
I did have a few problems with the Oigus bearings. Uh, over time they degrade. Um, these are the polymer bearings, so I know you can't see that, but in there I have changed those for uh, linear rails. Um, they're only cheap Chinese ones, they're not high winds or anything, uh, but they, they do the job. Um, I don't need model perfection out of this printer, I just need solid, flat, square, sturdy ABS prints like, like this sort of thing, and like these. Um, so that's what I do. Good. Oh, I will break it now when I. But only because I've put my whole body weight on that. So. Yeah. This is an old one. These will break, but. Yeah, it takes almost everything I've got to break them. Anyway, so that's what this thing pumps out is solid things, well not solid, but you know, thin wall plastic boxes and such like, brackets and things, and it, it does that 24-7. These will be something different, uh, these will actually be printing something probably a little bit more, um, uh, less industrially orientated and engine it less commercially orientated and more for the for the shop which is still totally empty apart from some things that have been printed on the on the TiVo Michelangelo's um, which are fantastic little printers so I'm doing a couple of these um, Vorpal uh, hexapod things um, yeah, still in, still in the progress. Just not enough hours in a day and not enough days in a week. But so that's what I'm doing. This is the larger printer. I'll get back to this. This is going to be the probably the enclosed one. I'm using. Um, people are going to probably think this is strange, but uh, there is a reason for using these. I'm um, using these Drylin Igus bearings again. So it's a non metal bearing there's a polymer bearing in there which you can adjust to take the play up I've not adjusted this one I have done this one so this one doesn't move up down left right anywhere and it slides very nice um, and this frame is just put together to size it up really I'll be using a NEMA 23 stepper motor and this will be driving a whole carriage across nearly nearly a meter uh, in length. I won't be using this stepper. The, the the NEMA stepper that I've got is actually a feedback stepper that can um, monitor its position with its own controller and make adjustments. Blah blah blah. So it's a little bit more intelligent than a standard stepper, but it just putting that there for showing on this video the size of the motor that will be used for this. Um, the reason this one's this sort of size and I'm using these dry lins is um, I want to actually have a carriage that can take some weight. So this printer isn't for super lightweight speed operation. This one's going to have a strong cross beam carriage and it's going to have a bed plate with an opening and almost a concertina uh, cover a bit like this one so as you can see there I've got a, like a, a polycarbonate concertina roof and it helps keep the heat in and the dust out um, which is a, obviously for me it's quite an important factor keeping all the dust and debris out uh, especially with a printer that I run 24-7. Um, so yeah, that concertina type roof system that just sort of floats on a on a roof. That will be on, on here as well, so it'll have a cross gantry. 
and uh, it will operate through the hole in the roof with that concertina and in here will be a warm chamber driven by this belt um, this is actually a AT synchronous belt coated with a special Teflon uh, coating to make it anti well, as low friction as possible anti-friction they call it but a very expensive belt I think that one 10 meters of belt was 130 pounds um, with a matching set of pulleys but it's a very nice precision steel core belt a uh, high tensile belt actually as well so should not be a problem moving this weight on this gantry and um, with the NEMA 23 stepper which I've got um, with the feedback it is a little bit bigger than this one it comes to about here and uh, yeah it can it's far more resolution than a standard uh, 3d print driver can ever go I mean most most people go to a 32-bit step in the one I've got can go 256 stepping so uh, it's a considerable increase in accuracy if you need it I shan't be relying on that I'm going to gear this a little bit so this won't be geared one to one it will be geared down somewhat anyway I always favor mechanical gearing over electrical um, there's many reasons for that I won't go into them on this video so there we go do apologize it's shaky shaky video guys uh, I still haven't got a proper camera and a setup got a tripod I ain't got nothing to put put on it though so uh, I'm still operating off a Samsung phone and uh, I do practically most of this in the evening and, and through the night into early hours of the morning at the moment so this this will start to take over a little bit more as time goes on but as I say it's the main main job and living has to come first unfortunately I just wanted to do a quick video to show yeah what I'm thinking of, of building at the minute and there we go so a very similar design to most people I think what everyone's seen on uh, available from China the sort of TiVo tornado design that's similar to what this one's going to be just a very very sturdy TiVo tornado um, and this one is completely different to what I was going to do. I was going to go Core XY again, but not on this one. The reason being, I'm going to put this water-cooled E3D Titan in, in this machine. In fact, I'm going to put a couple. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do a tool change system um, and make this pick up two water-cooled heads. Um, this is just, for, I'm just holding this here for size really, this ain't going to be the gantry that it's on, all these wheels, it'll be sat on something else, but yeah, so I'm going to have a one or two Titan E3D water cooled heads in here, that will be actually hanging down in the heated chamber from the gantry, and we'll have a print area of, of possibly about 800 mil by, um, 500 mil yeah somewhere along there and about 500 high that's going to be the print volume of this printer it's going to be a large format printer um, I would expect nozzle size 0.6 upwards anything smaller it's just it's just not going to be worth you putting on this machine it's going to be a large format machine for for things and I shall build two like this uh, two like that and then once these are built I will build another two versions of this, but much better. So two other Core XY heated chambers. So I'll build two more like that, but better. And uh, hopefully these can be done in the next sort of couple of weeks. I have got a lot on my plate at the moment, but this is roughly the design I've settled on. Um, let's see where they go. Just a quick few mentions on this one. Um, I'm going to actually put this a larger NEMA 23 in the base. A 
this one or possibly here it will drive one shaft there will be a belt linking underneath if I can get away with that at the minute I shall uh, have to see but I've got plenty of room so there will be a belt underneath linking the two Z rods to drive the carrot the the main gantry up and down these will just be open build rails um, with a NEMA here so let's just use this for sort of an example probably here like that driving this bed up and down not this bed because it's a, a little bit thick and heavy so I'll get something lighter and probably get it milled and machined out because that's, that's, that's a this is a heavy bed, 6 mil solid plate, so a bit too heavy for moving at speed, so the, yes, this is all just sort of rough placed, so I can sort of size it up and think about it. So there we go, that's the sort of TiVo Tornado copy um, on steroids, this one, I would say, it's, it's a bit beefed up. And uh, I've not finished yet, so there'll be loads more brackets and supports to make it sturdy. It's not very sturdy at the minute. And here's the other one again, so two printers, uh, still in very, very early, early days of uh, the builds, but it shouldn't take too much longer to get that, those two done. And then this one will probably follow uh, a few a week or so afterwards um, but yeah so there we are guys that's where I am with these I have ordered some printers I've got a couple of TiVo tornadoes back at home which I need to bring down here uh, yeah, sorry TiVo Michelangelo's which I need to bring down here so I'm going to bench all this off and put a couple of the Michelangelo's in the front there. I've got some TiVo tornadoes on their way as well, so they'll probably go in in that window. And these will probably go probably in a back corner over here with this one once I tidy up a bit. I've not even finished decorating or anything in here yet, guys. So yeah, on my doing this all on my own at the moment, so it's a bit of a challenge. But there we are, two printers. Um, Part started and um, shouldn't be too much longer guys so do apologize and I'll keep you uh, updated if, if anything changes on, on these or if I make some good progress in the next week or so I'll uh, update you all. Cheers!